Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about capnography. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed the channel, please subscribe the channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. What is capnography? The term capnography refers to the non-invasive measurement of the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in exhaled breath. Moreover, it provides a breath-by-breath -breath analysis and a continuous recording of ventilatory status. Now, let's discuss what is capnogram and what is capnograph. Capnogram provides a real-time waveform record of the concentration of carbon dioxide in the respiratory gases. Whereas, capnograph provides waveform plus numerical value as shown in this image. Now, what is n-tidal carbon dioxide? In short, we call it ETCO2, which is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide at the end of an exhaled breath. To understand capnography, we must have a clear idea about the respiratory cycle. The respiratory cycle consists of two components, inspiration and expiration. There are two concepts, oxygenation and ventilation. These two are entirely different mechanisms, but they both rely on the respiratory cycle. Oxygenation relies on the inspiratory phase, whereas ventilation relies on the expiratory phase. Oxygenation refers to the amount of oxygen available and utilized, whereas ventilation refers to the amount of carbon dioxide produced during the metabolic cycle of the cells and exhaled from the body. Both oxygenation and ventilation are needed in proper proportion to sustain a quality life. Now, here comes determination of oxygenation and ventilation status. In determining the oxygenation status, invasively, arterial blood gas analysis is done to determine the partial pressure of oxygen. Non-invasively, pulse oximetry determines the SpO2 level. Now, in determining ventilation status, invasively, arterial blood gas analysis determines the partial pressure of carbon dioxide level. And non-invasively, capnography determines the ETCO2 level. This is measured breath by breath at the end of the expiratory phase of respiration. Now, Pulse oximetry versus capnography or oxygenation versus ventilation. Oxygen is needed for metabolism. SpO2 measures percentage of oxygen in RVCs and reflects changes in oxygenation within 5 minutes. CO2 is the end product of metabolism. ETCO2 measures exhaled carbon dioxide at the point of exit and reflects changes in ventilation within 10 seconds. In short, capnography gives an immediate picture of the patient's condition whereas pulse oximetry is delayed. For example, when connecting to capnography and pulse oximetry and you hold your breath, capnography immediately shows apnea whereas in pulse oximeter, oxygen saturations will remain normal for a prolonged period of time. Capnography provides instantaneous information like ventilation, perfusion, and metabolism. Regarding ventilation, it explains how effectively carbon dioxide is being eliminated by the pulmonary system. Regarding perfusion, it explains how effectively carbon dioxide is being transported through the vascular system. And regarding metabolism, it explains how effectively carbon dioxide is being produced by cellular metabolism. Now, let's discuss the types of devices used to monitor ETCO2. Semi-quantitative capnometry, under which comes calorimetric ETCO2 detector. It contains color change assay, that is purple, tan, and yellow. There is no number or waveform in this, and it only explains if there is ETCO2 or not. Next is quantitative capnometry, 
which only gives number and there is no waveform. And the other is quantitative capnometry which gives both waveform and number as shown in this picture. Now comes the capnography device setup. There are many types of CO2 sensor like mainstream CO2 sensor, side stream CO2 sensor and micro stream CO2 sensor etc. Here we are going to see about the setup of mainstream CO2 sensor. At the terminal end of the ET tube, the mainstream CO2 sensor is connected and at the other end of the CO2 sensor, the breathing circuit is connected. The cable from the sensor connected to the monitor displays the CO2 waveforms. Now, why is capnography used? There are so many clinical applications, for example, ET tube placement verification, monitoring airway or ventilation during sedation, detect breathing or apnea, ventilator malfunction, assess ventilation during CPR and detecting written off spontaneous circulation during CPR, detecting prognosis during CPR or resuscitation. Next comes ETCO2 values. 35 to 45 mmHg is the normal range of ETCO2. When it goes beyond 45 mmHg, we call it hypoventilation. In hypoventilation, respiratory rate decreases, which in turn decreases the gas exchange and thereby ETCO2 increases. When it goes below 35 mmHg, we call it hyperventilation. In hyperventilation, the respiratory rate increases, increasing the gas exchange and thereby ETCO2 will decrease. Let's discuss about the factors affecting ETCO2. Causes of increased ETCO2 includes reduced respiratory rate that is hypoventilation, reduced tidal volume, increased cardiac output, increased dead space, rebreathing or breath stacking, and hyperthermia. Causes of reduced ETCO2 includes Increased respiratory rate that is hyperventilation, increased tidal volume, reduced cardiac output, pulmonary embolism, hypovolemia, hypothermia, etc. So, this will be a short introduction on capnography, concepts like respiratory cycle, oxygenation and ventilation and factors affecting ETCO2. In next video, we will be discussing about normal capnographic waveform, abnormal capnographic waveforms, clinical application of capnography, and nursing alerts. If you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon.